Hey everyone, it's Mojax back in the DJ City UK lab. You know, it's been a minute since we looked at any new portableism stuff, but there's been plenty going on. Let's get to it. So first up, we have the JDD PTA, or to give it its full name, the Jesse Dean Designs Portable Turntable Tone Arm. Quite a mouthful. This is a seriously fancy piece of engineering, which honestly would look more at home on a high-end audiophile deck than a budget plastic PTO one. Materials are top-notch throughout, with the gimbal being produced from billet aluminium and containing proper ball bearings, there's a brass counterweight, and the arm itself is made of actual carbon fiber. No, not some carbon looking wrapped to nonsense, but actual carbon fiber. In the case of my early version, the head shell is also carbon fiber, although that's been switched to aluminium in the more recent revisions to allow the company to offer more colorways and things like that. The tension system is based on an adjustable spring setup, allowing the arm to stick to the groove nicely without putting too much pressure on your stylus or vinyl. It comes preset to allow a short M44-7 to rest at 3.5 grams, which should be perfect for most people. The arm comes in a kit with a preamp and all the cables and bits you need to get it installed. The latest version is pretty much a solder-free experience, much easier than the early version I have, which I had to have installed by Jesse himself. It was a job beyond my abilities but fitting the new one should be a fairly simple process for pretty much anyone. It's worth noting that the JDD PTA also works with the Vestax Handy Tracks if that's your portable turntable of choice. In performance terms, the JDD PTA did not disappoint. The high build quality of the arm combined with a preamp and a 447 led to a massive improvement in sound quality over the stock part. And thanks to the spring tension system, the stylus stays nicely locked in the groove without ever feeling that you're doing damage to your vinyl or needle. There is one downside to the Jesse Dean tone arm though, and that is the price of it. At $150 for the kit, you're effectively doubling the price of a PTO one scratch, and that's before you do any other upgrades to it. It is a big investment, considering that other decent tone arm upgrades like the Bihari Designs one are available at under half the price, but in the end, the JDD PTA is built like nothing else on the market, and if you must have the best, this is it. They're produced in small batches, which typically sell out very quickly, so if you want one, you'll need to keep an eye on the Jesse Dean Design site for news of when the next run is dropping. Next up, we have the Solid Cuts Platter. The platter on the PTO1 series of tables is definitely a weak point for scratching, moving up and down far too much as you put pressure on it with your hand. Various ideas have surfaced over time to stabilize it, like the Stokio Scratch Steady, which I reviewed a while back. Rather than adding to the stock setup though, Solid Cuts have taken a different route altogether, instead opting to replace the entire platter with one made of aluminium. It's available in two versions, with the standard having a solid top surface, and the premium, the one I've had on test, featuring milled slots in the top. Those aren't just for show, one big benefit of those slots is that it makes it super easy to reseat the belt onto the motor when you're putting the platter back on the table. The Solid Cuts platter doesn't seem to have much impact on the sound of the PTO-1, although in theory a more torsion resistant platter should make for a slightly tighter sound. But where it does have a big impact is with the stability side of things. There is a hugely reduced amount of up and down movement compared to the stock platter, with the Solid Cuts offering really living up to its name. The fit and sizing is spot on, and it made no noticeable difference to the speed of the PTO-1, with zero on the pitch still being roughly zero. It's usually a tiny bit off as standard anyway, being a cheap belt drive table. The regular version of the platter sells for 43 euros, with the premium version costing 72 euros. Worldwide shipping is around $20, so that means both versions come in under $100 delivered to the US. As to which version to choose, well, as cool as the premium one looks, you aren't going to see it when it's in use, and both versions will give you largely the same performance benefits when it comes to stability, so it is a tough call. But whichever one you go for, I don't think you'll be disappointed. A nicely made product which, like the Jesse Dean arm, would feel at home on a much more expensive turntable. Finally, we have a couple of new designs to hold external faders. As cool as the built-in options for the PTO one Scratch are, there are still plenty of portableists who prefer an external fader for various reasons, and so devices like these can be very useful, allowing users to position the fader in comfortable positions around the deck at the correct height. There's the RXI foot from MK Stands. This is made from the same custom polymer rubber as their turntable isolation feet, which means it grips onto surfaces really well. It's created specifically to fit the popular RXI F1 and F2 faders from Raiden, 
and has cutouts to let you run all the cables into the side as normal. The fader is a perfect fit in the stand and I love the extra cutout in the base which lets you flip the fader over for safe dust free storage and transport. At £35 sterling with worldwide shipping available it's a great option if one of those Raiden faders is your weapon of choice although obviously it's no use for anything else. On the more universal side of things we have the Turntable Training Wax Side Click or SC1. This debuted at the recent Portabilis Lounge event and has taken off very quickly. It's laser cut from CR4 steel, meaning it's sturdy but lightweight and has a rubber foot on one end with a cutout at the other being a perfect match for the foot on a PTO1. That means you can position the SC1 under any foot and pivot it to whichever angle you like around the table. You'll need to mount your fader with Velcro on top of the SC1 but it takes all different sizes of fader and at £20 sterling with worldwide shipping available I can see this one being very popular indeed. Simple, affordable and portable. Everything a product in this market should be. So there you go, a look at some of the cool new stuff that's dropped in the portable scene in recent months. Let me finish this video though with a cautionary note. Now the more observant amongst you might have noticed that I didn't actually demonstrate the Jesse Dean tone arm in use at all, scratching or playing vinyl just wasn't in there. And there's a good reason for that. And that's because originally this was fitted for me by Jesse himself. When he was in the UK, he took my PTO one USB and he soldered the arm in, he did the preamp and everything else. And it was installed beautifully and it was working perfectly. The sound was great, performance was great. I was really happy with it. But then a few weeks after that, I decided I wanted a start stop button mod on my PTO one USB to go with my PTO on Scratch wanted similar kind of capability. So I ordered a kit and unlike the Bahari Designs one that I had for the PTO on Scratch, this was not a solderless kit. This was a, a kit that required a little bit of soldering. And soldering is not a skill that I have. It's a skill I'd quite like to have. It's something I want to learn. But right now I can't solder at all. And I tried it and I killed this deck stone dead. Now the power board is all messed up. I tried to move things around. Basically the inside of this thing is like a car crash. And that's because I tried to mod beyond my own skills and my own capabilities. Now, these PTO ones are not the most expensive thing in the world. You know, you're not talking, it's like breaking a CDJ or something like that. They're only like a hundred bucks, 150 bucks. It's not the end of the world, but it's an awful lot of money to waste if you break something. And you can get spares for them, yeah. But fundamentally, my best solution right now is to junk this one entirely and get a new PTO on scratch, put the tone arm into that one, get it fitted by somebody who can actually solder and do the job for me. So that's just my word of caution, right? You need to think about your capabilities of what you can do. And if a job looks like it is beyond you, take it to an electronic shop, take it to somebody who can actually do the soldering for you because you don't wanna end up with a dead turntable. You know, stuff like changing the platter, that's easy, anyone can do that. The Bahari tone arm, pretty straightforward, solder free, swapping out a fader and so on. Yeah, this is all fairly straightforward stuff. But once you start digging around inside here and you actually are soldering stuff and trying to fix it, yeah, you could well get yourself into trouble very quickly. And as much as I love the mod scene, I think modding your turntable is really, really fun. There's not a lot of fun about a dead turntable. So just bear that one in mind. Thank you for watching today. Make sure you subscribe for all our future tips, tricks, and product reviews. I'll see you soon.